Images of pain, suffering, and despair taken from the front lines of forgotten conflicts. My next guest, the American photographer Adrian Onahesian, sets out to document the fate of people caught in the web of war. Now, one expedition took her to the Darfur region, where she was one of the few outsiders to gain access to the remote rebel-held areas. There, she captured haunting images of entire communities forced to uproot and live in caves, the only shelter available from government airstrikes. She also accompanied rebel soldiers on her journeys, snapping photos as they waited for the call to battle. Her photographs give them faces and reveal some as just mere children caught up in war. Ohanesian was honored with a top photography award for her work in Darfur, and she is our guest tonight here on The Day. And she joins us now from Washington, D.C. I, th I understand that she just flew into Washington um, from Africa. Um, Adrian, thank you very much for being on The Day. Congratulations, first of all, on this award. Uh, tell us, how did you find out about it? Well, it's funny, actually. I was in the middle of nowhere when I found out about the award. Um, and I knew that people had been trying to contact me. Um, maybe it ruined the surprise a bit. But um, I was in the middle of South Sudan um, photographing a rural hospital um, when I received a call. So you were in Sudan, which really is the, the focus point even of your entry uh, for this award, for the Anya Niedringhaus Courage in Photojournalism. Um, award. We've, we've got some pictures um, of your entry. Maybe if we could just um, talk about those for a second so that our viewers can get a better understanding of what it is you were able to, to capture. Um, take us through this. Um, let's talk about the picture of the cave. That is the one that I was looking at today that struck me the most. Um, what's the, what's the backstory there? Well, the photograph of the cave was something completely unexpected. Um, I knew that there had been people hiding up in the mountains, and the people are hiding from their own government's forces. Um, the government continuously bombs Darfur and often in civilian areas. Um, so the people are in the cave um, to escape aerial bombardment. Um, and that's one of the few places where people felt secure. Um, there's no other reason people should be living in a cave. Um, except for the fact that they're hiding from something extremely terrifying. And th these are terrifying images, terrifying realities that, that you have captured. Um, and we can't discount the risk that you put to your own personal safety uh, when you go out to cover these stories. What do you do to minimize the risk? Well, I think especially with this trip, I mean, it took me years to be able to make it into Darfur. Um, and I didn't even know until I was there and back out again um, that I would be able to capture anything. I, I didn't even tell any publications I was going, um, mainly because I didn't want to disappoint them. I didn't want to fail and come out with nothing. Um, so I think just being able to spend time and, and take your time and um, realize that the most important thing is your safety. Um, because also, if you're, if you're worried about your safety, you're not going to be able to do your work. So I wanted to make sure um, it was as secure as possible to go. Um, you have said that um, despite, you know, being uh, an, a recipient of many awards, I mean, we have to let our, our viewers know that this is not the first award that you have received. Um, despite all of these awards, you remain... Um, a freelance photographer, photojournalist, and you're quoted as saying that you almost, that you say yes to almost every assignment that comes your way, um, and that you even self-fund your trips to Darfur, for example, and other dangerous regions. What do you think that says about the state of journalism, photojournalism today? I mean, is there any money, is there any real interest left for the stories like the ones you're bringing to the world? Well, I think the story is proof that there are interests in those stories. Um, I guess the road I've taken might be a bit less traveled, but it has, in fact, worked. Um, 
I've been lucky to work in a region um, like South Sudan, for example, that has been in the news um, quite quite a lot because of its independence. Um, but again, I, I do take NGO jobs quite often. Um, I work for UNICEF consistently in three different countries. Um, and that's all part of photography as well. Um, and these these jobs that I do, like the Dark Four work, that was, that was three weeks. And that, I don't know if I'd be able to do that work on assignment um, and spend the amount of time that I did on it. Um, so I think there's there's a place for all different types of work. Um, I guess that's, this is just how I've chosen to to operate. Uh, we understand the, the prize that you get will also come with twenty thousand um, dollars, which you've said that you're going to use to fund uh, future projects in in, in Sudan. Um, let me ask you, your, your parents, you're from Saratoga Springs in New York, right? And your parents, how do you explain to your parents when you were heading out to cover a story like the one in Darfur or Sudan? I think the short answer is that I don't tell my parents before I go. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't tell them exactly what I'm doing. Unfortunately, there's photographic evidence that, that kind of mother. shows <laughs> what I've been doing. Um, so most of the time, most of the time, my mother finds out what I've been doing through the photographs yeah. um, and the interviews. Most recently, we've had to have a couple of conversations about certain bombings and certain robberies that I might not have clearly explained to her in the past. Um, but it, it is a risk. and. Um, the largest concern for me is is how that does impact other people as well. Um, but I hope I hope that the work um, is worth it. Well, um, you're definitely getting a due recognition, and we understand the um, the award ceremony is this evening there in in Washington. And again, our congratulations to you, Adrian Ohanessian, the recipient of the Anya Niedringhaus Courage in Photo journalism award adrian thank you very much for taking the time to talk with us and stay safe thank you